Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Agile Tester Sample Paper Discussions. We are in Chapter 3 talking about Agile Testing Methods, Techniques and Tools. And now we are coming up with the last set of questions for this entire set A. That is question number 39 and 40. So let's have a look on what questions do we have from this sample paper on the last two topics and see what could be the best way to answer them. Well, the next question for the day is question number 39 and it says which of the following is one of the purposes of an ALM that is application lifecycle management tool on an agile project. Now this ALM is not reported re related to that particular ALM which we have in the market like a micro focus ALM. ALM is a generic name called as a tool which is maintaining the entire end-to-end -end application lifecycle. So what is the use of so, such kind of tools when it comes to agile project management? Uh, the four options given to us is option A, an ALM tool allows team to build up a knowledge base on tools and techniques for development and testing activities. Um, that looks a little incorrect because this would be one of the purposes of Wiki. In, in the chapter three, we discuss about three different parameters wiki uh, desktop sharing and instant messaging so from that context they're asking you what is the benefit of alm so uh, when you talk about alm or the purpose what has been given here that is it helps the team build the knowledge base what is required and the two on tools and techniques for development and testing activity that certainly talks or looks more like a wiki whereas an alm is not a particular tool which does that job right it's more about day-to-day -day activities and different artifacts to be managed, not just the knowledge base, right? So that's option A is talking more from the perspective of wikis, not from the perspective of an ALM tool. B, an ALM tool provides quick response about the build quality and details about the code changes. And indeed, even this is not one of the things, this is basically the purpose of continuous integration tool. If I talk about continuous integration tool, they have the capability of early and frequent feedback with respect to the build quality and details about the code changes. ALM doesn't have any such capability and will not be able to do that. When you talk about the option C, an ALM tool provides visibility into the current state of the application, especially with distributed teams. Exactly true. ALM has such capabilities where the tool allows you to synchronize and collaborate no matter which location you are in. And ALM is more like it's a management tool with the feasibility of collaborations together. That means it's a shared repository and people can access it from multiple locations no matter where they are from. So it's just basically one of the primary purposes of the ALM tool and also using this tool it allows more collaboration with distributed teams than physical task boards. So you will have a great option with respect to this particular you know option related to ALM. Whereas let us cross check with option D. The D says an ALM tool generates the loads generates and loads large volume and combine of some combination of data use uh, for use of testing. Uh, I think this is talking more from the purpose of the data generation tools because these tools are capable of populating a lot or a huge amount of data which can be used for testing whereas an ALM does not do this job. ALM can only be used for managing your day-to-day -day activities like tasks or you know, the test artifacts and then collaboration together that multiple people can see that information and contribute to it. So in that context put together, the right answer here is C, an ALM tool provides visibility into the current state of the applications, especially with distributed teams as one of the attribute which we need in, time, in terms of maintaining the agile projects. Well, moving on to the next and the last question of this entire set A tutorials and the questions of this particular paper. Question number 40. Which of the following statement is false with respect to exploratory testing? So all we need to find out is what is irrelevant about exploratory testing. So again, do the similar thing to answer these type of questions is recall everything about exploratory testing what you remember that hey we use test charter we have high level test information we also talk about the you know time box test execution the time is between 30 to 120 minutes of slots and 
you know, you know we just have to use it as as per our experience now given that we have just quickly recalled exploratory testing all of that what is false about it in this particular option many people don't read the word false and they think that more than one option was right which is absolutely true here more than one option is right about exploratory all they're asking you which is not right which is false Right. So option A says exploratory testing encompasses concurrent learning, test design and execution. Now, it is certainly not correct because it is true about exploratory testing. Right. So exploratory testing is all about concurrent learning and exploration of the system under test, then designing in parallel and then executing those tests. Look at the option B. It says exploratory testing eliminates the need for testers to prepare the test ideas prior to test execution. I think that's that's something which is contradicting to a certain extent, saying that test charters are generally created prior to test execution, which includes the objective and the ideas to be included for that particular execution. So it's not that just because it is exploratory, you're going to click randomly on the application without any scope and objective. So you are certainly going to do it, but with respect to the initial ideas, what you may have, right? So it's very important to know that though we are doing exploratory testing as an attribute, we have the ideas, right? So the option is saying it eliminates the need of need for these, which is incorrect. B, best results are achieved when exploratory testing is combined with other test strategies. Of course, true. Uh, there's no harm in combining two or more techniques if you want to achieve the better outputs and coverage measurements, including the confidence of the tester. So it is really, really recommended that if you think combining two or more techniques could yield you better results, then you should be able to do that or you should do that. Let's talk about option D. Exploratory testers need to have a solid understanding of the system and the test. Of course, exploratory is not about randomly clicking on the product as i told you earlier it's more about when you have poor specifications you go into the deep dive of the exploration of the product and understand better about it and gain all the understanding what you need before looking forward to execute the same right so in that context yes the tester needs to get good understanding of how the system is used and how to determine what when it fails so that's also one of the valid attribute of exploratory testing so i think it's very very straightforward and keeping it to the point the right answer here is b exploratory testing eliminates the need for a tester to prepare the test ideas prior to test execution is false about the exploratory testing now with this also we come to an end of this particular set A and of course it's not the end of our discussion as I told you I'll be having another set where we'll be taking another set of 40 questions starting right from next tutorial so stay tuned for that. So that's all from this particular tutorial team should you have anything else feel free to comment below I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then keep learning keep exploring keep understanding the context thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.